the art. Dude, if you've read Homunculus, I don't have to tell you how good the art is. Hideo Yamamoto is so underrated in the West, the only reason people know about Ichi at all is because of the live-action movie, which is actually pretty good. Yamamoto's ability to portray how the characters are feeling, usually paired with a lot of dark shading, is genuinely haunting. And the way he draws cities and landscapes, oh man, I'm appalled at how he does it. I see a lot of mangaka, even ones that I heavily respect, really struggle to come up with different facial designs to make the characters stand apart. Hideo Yamamoto is the complete opposite. Every character looks extremely unique, and it kind of adds to the realism. Eh, stuff I fucking like! Moral ambiguity may not be the best way to describe this series. There are no moral gray areas. Everyone in this story is an awful, depraved psychopath. However, it's extremely surprising how Yamamoto can endear you to some of these awful people through their situations or relationships. It makes the characters feel real. Like, hey, this guy might be a total degen, but he's also got people he cares about. And you end up caring about them too. At least, I do. Which may say more about me than anything else. But, moving on! This is genuinely one of the best paced stories I've ever read. The story never stops for a second, it's always feeding you new info. You just have to see how it ends. If anything, I think I would compare this story to Attack on Titan's pacing, which may sound weird just considering how different those stories are, but I'd even argue it's better than Attack on Titan's pacing. The events less feel like major arcs than just events, back to back to back. It's only around 100 chapters, with about 20 pages per chapter, and it feels like not a single panel is wasted. Every character interaction, every plot progression, it all builds up towards the ending. It makes for a reading experience you can't put down, if you can stomach it, that is. You know how in some series, the side characters will all have some sort of quirk to make them at least a little memorable? Well, each of the killer's take on that is, every character has some sort of fetish. It's as bad as it sounds. Nothing is too taboo for this manga. And I kind of love it for that. And one of my favorite parts of the story is definitely the ending. The final confrontation with Kakihara and Ichi is genuinely one of my favorite confrontations between a villain and a... You know, I definitely can't call Ichi the hero, and he's not even really the protagonist. How about the villain and the Ichi? Things that I didn't like so much. Now, I know I just sung the praises of the ending, and while, yes, it does have amazing character interaction, the actual events that take place and the quote-unquote action are just anticlimactic as shit, dude. The entire story is building up to this final confrontation, and when it finally gets there, it's kind of like they missed the ball completely. It didn't get the home run it deserved. Foul ball. Pitch runner. Baseball terminal. Fuck yeah. And then at the very end, there's somewhat of a bombshell that kind of changes what you think about the series, and it leaves a lot of the events up for interpretation. I usually really like this in stories. That's one of my favorite parts of Homunculus, actually, but I don't think it works as well here. It wasn't particularly bad, but it wasn't impactful either. Yamamoto seems to be great at telling stories, but he always struggles finishing them. In conclusion, I think if you can stomach it, this manga is a must-read. There aren't really any other series like it, ones with such compact storytelling that are such a joy from start to finish. It has such a heavy atmosphere of the crime ridden the streets of Japan, brought to life by its awful characters. And aside from some cartoony action set pieces, a lot of this manga feels grounded in reality. This manga won't really change the way you think about yourself, like Homunculus does, but there's still plenty to chew on, and it's honestly worth a couple rereads just to recontextualize everything in your head. There are very few manga that are quite like this one, and I hope you'll check it out. If you're not really a manga person, I would recommend the film by Takashi Miike. It handles the plot points pretty well, and it's the reason that this manga is such a cult classic in the West to begin with. If you've already read it, and you want to hear more people gush about it, check out CJ Mack and Wild Eagle's videos on it. They're great, small content creators worthy of your attention. If you want me to talk about another anime or manga, leave a comment and maybe I'll check it out. I've been sitting on this video script for three months. Three fucking months!